Hi everyone, my name is Gemma and today we are celebrating 75 years of Krylon, making professional makeup for the professional industry. And today I'm going to be using some of their classic products and demonstrating a 1940s makeup to represent the era of 1945 when Krylon was first established. I hope you enjoy the video. So the first part of my makeup that I'm going to begin to start with is my eyes and I'm going to focus on my eyebrows first. I'm going to talk through step by step of the application, the products that I'm using, but I'm going to keep it quite relevant to what was available in this um, decade. So in celebration of the Krylon birthday, I'm going to be focusing on the 1940s makeup um, of that era and really keep it as traditional as possible, which is going to be hard because there's so much um, so many products now that Krylon have available, you know, we're looking over 16,000 products um, but at the start of the, um, when Krylon was first found in 1945, we we're going to go over a few of the key elements and products that were available. So let's begin. On my eyebrows, um, I'm going to work with the Krylon Face Liner Pencil. This is a newer pencil to the Krylon range. I'm just selecting my shade, which is number 40. Uh, so pencil were only, and it's the only sort of eyebrow product available in the 1940s. So you pro possibly would go for either a black or a brown. And um, the eyebrow structure and shape really changed in this era especially from if you compare it to the previous decade in the 1930s, it was a very thin, round-shaped or um, arched brown. So there definitely was still a great definition to the eyebrow. However, it was a lot more fuller, so the hair was not overplucked. So for me to apply this, I probably am going to work with the shade number 20, which is a real deep brown. The face liner pencil you can actually use on the eye in the waterline and the eyebrow. You can even do freckles, etc. So it's a real versatile pencil. The original pencil that Krylon ever developed was the contour pencil, which we still have and it's still so popular today. Um, but this is a lot more softer. So I'm going to go work with this one on my eyebrow. I'm actually going to team up with a angled brush. This is a really, I love this angled brush because it's got a really thin edging here so I can get great precision on my application and this is 3406 the Krylon um, with the red handle brush that we see here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just carry on putting a little bit of that on the back of my hand because I have quite fair eyebrows. If I had a deeper brow I probably would go direct on but just because my eyebrows are a little bit fair I'm going to brush on this waxy base pencil over my eyebrow hair. I'm going to start so the style of the eyebrow for this decade was a lot more fuller at the front of the brow and then it would still continue quite finer edge towards the end angle of the eyebrow and then you still want to encourage that strong arch shape here so i think i will go directly with the pencil i need to get a mirror just a tad closer so i might go directly here onto the highest point and really encourage that shape. I will blend that through and then create more of a fluffier front start to the brow. So let's soften the edge in. So tiny little brush strokes and now I'm sort of almost dragging and pulling that product across. You can accentuate just here. And now I've got more of that product on my brush, which I can start to create a fuller front of my eyebrow. Tiny little movements. Fill in the brow if there's any gaps. There's a little bit of a gap there. So throughout this demonstration, I will show you the process on one side and then I'll come off camera to complete the other side so you don't see a repetition of me working. I'm slightly changing the angle now and I'm coming to... So the shorter angle was leading and now I'm going to go with the pointiest backwards here. And sort of fluff upwards and really come low on my brow placement. You can really see a difference in the two. 
So now that I've completed both eyebrows, this is now followed and teamed up with the Krylin Eyebrow Forming Gel. So this is just a clear transparent gel, which um, is just gonna tame the, the eyebrow hair. Also add a little bit of definition and lift, and it really sort of encourages that sort of fluffy start to the eyebrow. So this would have definitely been one of the steps in this time in the 1940s. And if this was, if they didn't have this available, then they would use um, sort of like a petroleum jelly or Vaseline instead. So there were such huge restrictions in this era due to the war that a lot of the raw materials to make makeup was just simply not available. You know, there was a restriction on alcohol, um, fats and oils, glycerine, and these are some of the main ingredients to make makeup and they were limited. So quite a lot of makeup ended up having home remedies. So yes, if this was not available at that time, then Vaseline was the second option. So let's move on to eyeshadows. Um, this for me, that like the 1940s makeup is renowned for this sort of classic vintage. Um, it's so glamorous, it's be such a beautiful makeup. So the eye makeup was really um, quite minimal. You probably use one to two colours and we're looking at shades such as greys, browns, um, greens and sort of like hazel colours and quite often the women would match the eyeshadow depending on their eye colour. Pretty much the complete opposite of what we do to the modern day where we, we select a colour that's going to complement the eye colours. So during the day, um, they would just wear one or two swatches of eyeshadow colour. So my selected product I'm going for for this demonstration is the Krylon Variety Eyeshadow Palette and this is Collection V3 and it's literally got all of the colours that would be available um, sort of in this decade. So that's what I'm going to start with. I'm going to place um, a little bit of foundation to begin with actually on to my eyelid just so I've got something to work on top and I'm going to go for the famous Krylon TV paint stick and I'll come back and discuss this product with you at a later stage. I'm just going to take a fluffy brush like a flat eyeshadow brush and place a small wash of this colour over my eyelid. I just need to sort of neutralise the tones that you see on my eyelid and just almost give me a base to uh, work upon. This is just an optional extra if you wanna recreate this 1940s look. So just to remind, we're doing a celebration of 75 years of Krylan. Like it's incredible a makeup brand has been around for such like long time and it's gone through all of the makeup decades, but we've focused in on the 1940s as Krylon was established in 1945. It was established by um, Arnold Langer, and Arnold Langer was a scientist, but he had a real passion for theater. So he combined his two loves, and that's how he came with his first product being theatrical makeup. Which is really interesting actually because in the 1940s because there was such a shortage on makeup women were even turning to theatrical makeup seeing if they can get it in you know um any local stores secondhand stores nearby and using theatrical makeup as their everyday makeup as well okay so just a little bit of that to begin with I'm now going to select the shade highlight from this palette here, which is this creamy uh, tone. So depending on your complexion, you may want to go a little bit lighter or you want to go for the more creamy, richer shade. So I'm going to go for a flat round brush and I'm going to put plenty of this all over my eyelid. It's a really natural, simple eye makeup. The makeup in the 1940s were, was quite natural and it definitely took away, it moved forward, shall we say, from the 1930s, which had a little bit more character to it. Um, we're really pulling it back, stripping it back to that natural beauty. And it was purely because of the shortage uh, due to the war that makeup then had to become minimal. There wasn't options of cosmetics available as much as it would have been in the 1930s. So with my flat brush, I'm taking this highlight tone all the way over my eyelid. 
onto even the mobile part of my eyelid here and uh, to up onto that brow bone to meet the eyebrow just nice and creamy nothing was over applied as the eyeshadow so like i said you select colors to suit your eye color and then quite often the only time it would maybe change and be a little bit more dramatic would be if the ladies were going out in the evening and they maybe would select a color like a gold or a silver maybe something that would then match their garments to complement those okay so for my next shade i'm gonna go for like this soft brown to keep it very very natural i don't want any sort of harsh focus um, and i'm going to place that into the natural crease of my eye i'm going to take brush 1707 which is a really lovely fluffy brush so it's not when the brush is sort of really fluffy like this you can't really over apply it, um, and have too much definition within the eye makeup and once i'm happy with the amount of color i will diffuse the application but nothing is too winged very simple The Kryolan eyeshadows that I'm using from the V3 palette are all a complete matte collection. We do other um, palettes, these 18 colour palettes in the Kryolan range. And they have different colours um, like brights, ones with more warm undertones. This is quite a cool palette, cool undertone. So I'm just placing it in the crease. I'm almost just letting the brush sit in here and do its own thing i'm going to continue this process and make sure i've really blended the application and i'm going to blend upwards as well So now I'm happy with the blend of the eyeshadow, it shouldn't be too much of a focus. If you can really see it, you may want to carry on blending or alternatively, go back to your original colour, which is that highlight tone um, and your flat brush and just go back in and just gently soften the application one more time. Or even pick up a new clean blending brush and take it over the application. You may want to sweep it all the way over or you may just want to clean up the application that's on the eyelid. So the eye makeup was very simple. Less was definitely more and there was a big change in the beauty industry when it came to makeup. Like we said before, in comparison to the 1930s, you would definitely see less is more and which was great because women were living on less because of rationing. So the now final step for the eye makeup would be eyeliner and lashes. And eyeliner definitely played a big part. And towards the later end of the 1940s, the liner became a little bit more elaborate and that went into the 1950s. So all that was available at that point again for eyeliner was a pencil. And quite often because of rationing, people were doubling up from eyebrow to eyeliner. So I'm gonna take the face liner in shade number 10, which is a deep black by Krylon. And I'm gonna run that along the lash line to give the expression that the lashes are a lot for. So with everything else being simple and in terms of eyeshadow, this was now sort of the focus on the eye makeup. I'm gonna take little small strokes and run that along my natural lash line. Now, if you're not used to doing an eyeliner, pencil is a great way to start because it naturally gives you stability while you're working. So I'm, for my eye shape, I do like to have a little bit more of a thickness on the outer edge and then I'll taper it to a smaller line as I come to the inner corner. But it all depends on your eye shape. So adapt the liner depending on the eye shape. If you have more of a protruding eye, then you can afford the line to be a little bit more thicker as you go all the way along. You may have a slight droopy eye, so then you need to keep the eye looking forward and straight ahead and keep the eye open and see where you want to towel the eyeliner. And you may want to keep the liner a little bit thinner so it doesn't overplay um, and overhide too much space that you have on the eyelid. Or alternatively, take the pencil 
through the waterline on the top lash line. So first of all, I'm just pushing that really into my lashes so it really gets into the gap. And like I said, as, as the decade, towards the end of the decade, the liner became more prominent and then it started to slightly wing out. And of course, if you go into the next era, you have the classic Marilyn Monroe star with the, the gorgeous feline flick. So now I'm going to go back to that angled brush and just soften my application to encourage a smooth liner. And like I said, depending on your eye shape, you may think about the depth of that line that you are creating. And it's just going to finish naturally into the peak or where your last lash is visible. And use this time to push in at the root and then just keep it very soft at the end as well. Don't make too much of a feature of your liner. Very small movements, keeping it very delicate Try not to put too much pressure and just gently glide that brush along. So now that you have made a big emphasis on the lash line, you can now enhance the lashes with mascara. Mascara was heavily applied um, to create a fuller lash and you could apply it onto the top and the bottom. So I'm going to go for the Kryolan uh, Dermacolor Light Mascara and apply several layers to build up intensity on my lashes. Now, if you wish to modernize this, of course, you can apply a set of false lashes. But as mentioned, um, I'm keeping this very traditional and what would have been available in the 1940s. So liquid mascara was now available at this point, but still very popular was the cake mascara, which Kryman made and they still make to this day. It's very popular in the theatre. Um, just because it's most hygienic, you can take a disposable mascara wand and keep applying and throw away that disposable. It's activated by water, but back in the days, not so hygienic, um, the ladies would use it spit. So sometimes it'd be called as like a um, spit cake um, to activate the mascara. So it's available in all different colours. Um, most popular would be the black or the brown. So I'm just going to do a zigzag motion and really emphasise and lift my lashes. And that is keeping a real vintage classic eye makeup to represent this era in celebration of Kryolan's birthday. So now the eyes are complete. There was never any makeup underneath the lower lash line so don't think to put any eyeliner or eyeshadow and there's no smoky eyes and um, so it's very very clean and natural and maybe just a light coating of mascara we're now ready to move on to the base foundation and the product i've selected for today is the Krylon tv paint stick and this uh, is so famous for Krylon and I'm so happy to share and celebrate this product by Krylon today and it was definitely very popular in this era of the 1940s um, and it possibly you know we first start off making products for the theatrical and cinema and ladies would be so inspired by um, actresses seeing them on the big screen and that's the, still the same for today we always get our makeup inspiration from celebrities and who is in sort of in the fashion industry. Um, so there was a big change really. So quite often in the evening, the ladies would go to the cinema to watch the big movies. And this now in this era is when they could see the cinema in a um, color. So now they could see what colors the um, the actresses were wearing and they could now notice that the, there's a big change in the application and that the coloring of the foundation gave more of a sun-kissed look. So even today, you will see similar similarities. Um, they would choose their foundation in light and dark shades to create almost a highlight and contour effect. The pale of the foundation would represent more of a youthful application, and then the darker would give more of a sun-kissed glow. So I'm taking this as shade NB, so that's a lighter tone. So the TV paint stick, as you can see, is a cream-based foundation and it is full coverage. 
and this one was only available the tv paint stick and also was very popular was the cake makeup which is like a, if you've not seen it before it's like a solid block and you would activate it with water and it would leave a powdered finish matte was very very popular in this era so the tv paint stick has a matte finish and so does the cake makeup they probably would have applied both of them with a damp sponge and I'm using a foundation brush to apply mine and I probably will pick up my Unicorn Perfector sponge and just help to blend so they would spend ages blending and blending and blending foundation to create a flawless natural makeup whereas today we probably won't blend it as much because we like you know there's quite a big trend of full coverage but also there is the trend of uh, light coverage and that's why we have so much um, options um, from Krylon, from fluid foundation, cream to cake and to the TV paint stick. So I'm just going to change shade. I'm going to go for ELO and DIN, uh, DIN just for some warmer and complexions to my skin. I'm just going to play around with these tones. But this was also popular in theatre because it's a wax based foundation. You know, it's got lots of oils and the oils would never mix if the actress or actor would perspire the foundation would not sort of come away with the sweat so that's why it was very popular and great for this coverage on stage it would disguise then any um you know maybe if you were slightly going flushed redness the pigments so great and rich that it would hide I'm going to use a little bit more of a warmer tone on my forehead and blend this all in all over and quite often there wasn't a huge um, amount of shades not like today they were very limited and quite often they used to have quite a pink undertone which was great for the more older women of a sort of a fairer skin because skin would always go a little bit more yellow and sallow so the pink was great to give that warmth but if it wasn't your shade, quite often the foundation would come all the way down to the neck and even further to wherever their outfit was showing the skin. So I'm just going to continue to blend this in all over my base. So I'm just going to go back in with the shade ELO, which is this yellow uh, undertone TV paint stick with that beauty blender sponge and just put a little bit more extra to conceal under my eyes and that's what's so great about the tv paint stick you can build upon this if you want extra coverage and you know there wasn't a separate product for concealer which you know later on krylon did develop the derma color which is a fantastic um, cosmetic camouflage cream that really does conceal everything and that's what i would you know if i wasn't sticking to what was available i would be putting that on right now but i'm just building up but as you can see this is still such a great result so the tv paint stick was you know predominantly aimed for t uh, theater and cinema and like i said influenced by the actresses um, and seeing how great they looked on the screen they wanted to use exactly what were they were using you know but as makeup artists we know that the certain products that you use for different medias um, so it then soon became the everyday foundation that the woman would wear. So the foundation would not be complete. So I'm just stiffening in extra coverage. The foundation would not be complete without powder. You know, matte powder, um, mattifying the base was definitely the trend. And I am going to take, and pressed powder was now available. It wasn't just loose. So quite the most popular um, loose powder by Krylon is the translucent powder, which is available in all different shades. I'm actually going to go for the dual finish powder and really load it with my powder puff. And you would see women um, always in the powder room mattifying the skin. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to play around with a few pink and yellow tone, really, and just set my base into place so it completely looks flawless and that was the aim and it's so funny because you know today you know Krylon have manufactured so many more products from in comparison to back then 
you know we have primers available now to help mattify the skin you don't just have to rely on the pressed powder we now have powders that are micronizer moving with technology and developed to uh, high definition powders so it's so lovely to see how the brand has developed depending on what the industry or the beauty makeup industry needs I'm just rocking that all over making sure I've completely secured and set my base I absolutely love the jewel finish powder um, this is definitely one of my favorite pressed powders by Krylam it contains an ingredient called mica which also reflects light so it doesn't it takes away that the glossy shine to give you that matte finish but it doesn't dull your skin down I always say it gives me like an airbrushed feel to my um, my skin and looks great on camera so to continue with this natural base, um, we're now going to add some blusher, which was formerly known as Rouge back in this era. Powder blusher was available as well as cream blusher, but when there were those restrictions and limits to cosmetic in the beauty industry due to rationing, people would also take their lipstick and apply that as their blusher, which we still do that today. So I'm gonna go for Krylan's uh, 15 color palette here of all different rouges. And most popular would be the pinkier undertone blushes. So I'm going to select um, from my Blue Master range this lovely soft angled brush and add a hint of like a rosy pink. I'm going to go for shade 081, which is this beautiful pinky tone here. And just a dusting of that onto the apples of my cheeks and travel that up to my cheekbone. So just blowing that colour outwards. The crown and eye, um, eyeshadow and blusher, sorry, are super pigmented, so I always dust off my excess. And it's keeping them with sort of the matte theme. Um, I personally, as a makeup artist, if I've powdered quite heavily, which I have done for that flawless base and matte finish, I then like to continue with a powdered blush. If I hadn't have set the um, foundation with the powder, I would then maybe go for the, a cream blusher. And I love to use the Krylon Super Color for cream blush. It's so creamy and rich in color. And then you can always either add extra with this or powder it to soften it. So now for the famous and most iconic part of this classic vintage makeup from the 1940s era is the red lip. And the shape of the lip was definitely um, a lot different from the previous decade when it was a very small bow. So now the lip was enhanced quite big and um, slightly rounder and extended on the top lip. And any red shade was, was available now for this. Um, and again, because of the screens and seeing the famous actresses you could also identify which colour of red lip they were using but it's also key that you keep the lipstick matte. Also later and later on in the decade lip pencils became available so I'm going to now select the face liner in shade number 32 and help to create that defined classic red lip. So this is a really deep red and I'm going to really extend out so almost adding an extra roundness to the outer edge here to give me a full lip and I think if there was one makeup item that the women of this era would wear if they had no time for anything else would be the red lip. Nearly 80% of the population was now wearing red lipstick in all different undertones. So they were all available from a pink, orange, blue. Red was the classic iconic staple part of the makeup. Now to complete the makeup, I'm going to apply the famous red lipstick. However, Krylon have been making all different lipsticks um, from palette form to a matte lipstick, a classic lipstick, shimmer lipstick. But I want to introduce their latest um, 
matte lipstick and matte was definitely the focus for the trend in that era and i'm going to select the red lip stain so i have two colors and i'm going to play around with rock and r&b it's just because this is the most incredible lip product i feel krylon do um it's like a liquid lipstick completely matte smudge proof velvety very comfortable to wear so the Rock is the deeper of the two, and this one's a little bit more orange. So I'm going to just play around with each of those shades. So I'm going to use an angled brush to finish off this classic vintage makeup. I must say, I genuinely feel like it's one of my most favourite decades for makeup. It's got like this real beauty simple but elegant feel to the makeup and i really should stop talking when trying to do my lips so i love a good angled brush because i feel i can flick the brush in depending which angle i'm traveling on the lip i'm using that lighter shade more to the center so I'm just applying the finishing touches and I really like to use the edge of the brush to get great precision. So I like to tilt my head up and make sure I've filled in and get a clean, crisp outline. And I feel like that's definitely the finishing touch for this classic vintage makeup representing from the 1940s. I really hope you've enjoyed watching today's video and celebrating Krylon 75 years in making and manufacturing makeup for the professional industry and um, so celebrating with this vintage makeup as Krylon was born in 1945 and I wish them a happy birthday. Thank you for watching.